Well, good morning, folks. How's Vegas treating you? Had a good show till now? Uh, my name is Vineet Tyagi. I'll be uh, talking about in the next 30 minutes about uh, the topic blue. Uh, I'd like to present a blueprint for a data warehouse modernization. We only have 30 minutes, so there's a lot of details that I could present, but you know, you're welcome to stop by our booth, 233, or catch me later outside. I'll be happy to answer more detail level questions, but uh, basically this is how we'll spend our 30 minutes today. I would uh, want to talk about a little bit about what are the drivers for uh, data warehouse modernization. Um, you know, what are some of the things that force you to think about modernizing your data warehouse. Obviously, we all know big data is real, big data is available, and we all want to uh, utilize that in our warehouse. But what are some of the real things that force us to kind of think in that direction? I'll talk about a little bit uh, in aspect of the dimensions of data warehouse modernization. So we have been working uh, with big data since uh, 2008, even before you know, the term became a very big buzzword. And in our experience, uh, working with a lot of customers, we've seen that there's certain dimensions you know, that we could extract from the work that we've done. I'd like to share those. And then uh, move on and present a data lake, uh, enterprise data warehouse, or a logical data warehouse, whatever you like to call it. Pick, uh, take your pick. Uh, and how does one use this architecture to data warehouse modernization? So I'll present a kind of a staged approach and a blueprint for modernizing our data, uh, data warehouses. So in terms of the drivers, some of the things that we have been seeing and uh, you know, I'm sure that you all of you would be experiencing is the fact that obviously one of the largest thing is handling the big data, uh, large volumes and the three Vs of data, both on the volume variety and the velocity uh, side of the data. The other driver that we've seen is that a uh, lot of the enterprises and the warehouses have become siloed, and there is a push to integrate them, integrate all of these warehouses together, which are done for multiple purposes or purpose-built data marts, and create a kind of a single source of truth. So irrespective of big data, there is also the driver for integration that's uh, forcing us to look at modernizing our data warehouses. The cost reduction is uh, one of the biggest drivers. You know, as you start the integration or handling the big data with the current set of technologies and the tools that we have for building our data warehouses, if you scale that out, that you know, in terms of handling these increasing volumes and variety and you know, uh, velocity of data is going to be a costly proposition. So how do you reduce your cost and contain the cost not only on the uh, handling the data storage uh, perspective, but also the perspectives of how do you process the data, how do you actually ETL the data, you know, the analytical processes that you're running on the data, and any other you know, processing needs that you may have with the data per se. Increasingly, we are seeing that we are moving away from a statistical paradigm of uh, sampling to working with more empirical ways of working with data, like you know, applying science with it. <clears throat> so what this means is basically, you know, uh, in terms of advanced analytics, there are there is a big driver that's forcing us to look at, uh, you know, not just sampling data and applying our statistical techniques on it, but you know, working with all the data and look trying to find meaningful insights from all the data that we possess. So that's another big driver that's happening. And the last one, but not the least, is the time reduction. You know, gone are the days where you know uh, your business users are not going to be happy getting an answer that it's going to take us six weeks to get this data churned out and you know integrated and available for insights. So that's an, another big push for drivers that we're seeing. In terms of uh, some of the dimensions of the uh, modernized data warehouse, so there is the dimension of uh, the nature of data. While uh, you can use Hadoop-oriented data lakes and other things for even storing structured data, but this dimension talks about what is your ratio, how much unstructured data are you dealing with versus the structured data that you use for insights. 
And typically, unstructured data, how much of raw data you want to use, uh, how you're going to accumulate that, what rate are you going to accumulate that on. So the nature of data and the ratio of these uh, two things that are available, that's also you know one dimension that we look at and analyze the need for modernizing a data warehouse. The second dimension, a very important one, is what is the level of unification of data that you're looking for? And that necessarily talks about, you know, the things that, you know, are you just looking at using unstructured data to drive and enrich the insights for your existing data? Or are you looking at integrating these two data sets together to derive new types of, you know, insights that were not possible earlier? So it's a fine line. Are you going to use the unstructured or the newly acquired data sources to just get some insights out of that and then mix it with your existing data and then create new insights? Are you going to mix both the data together to drive the new insights? And typically the use cases that become available because of this is the time analysis uh, kind of uh, use cases that you want to do and also delta data detection. You want to see how your business data has changed over a period of time. It also encourages experimentation. So what is the culture that you want to build? Um, from a compliance perspective, many companies are not very open to encourage a lot of experimentation on data. So what is your comfort level on opening up the data and the access to the whole source of the data? Are you open to create uh, uh, the lines of businesses creating their own uh, business solutions or not? So that's another dimension on which the analysis has to be done. And like I talked about, that moving from a statistical analyst intuition driven paradigm to a more empirical paradigm which forces us to actually look at the whole data and the insights that come from the data rather than you know, just relying on our experience, the business analyst thought so from the sample of the data that he saw. And obviously the scale being driven by demand, you know, you should be able to scale based on the demand. Moving on, I'll very quickly talk about, you all probably would know what a data lake is, but my definition is it's a very massive and easily accessible uh, data repository which is flexible and scalable as well. That's primarily built on inexpensive computer hardware. You know, so it doesn't really require very uh, com you know, sophisticated or high-end uh, computational servers to be available. And the important perspective that defines the data lake for us is that uh, it is designed to store uncategorized information in its raw format, as is format, which might include all the data that is immediately of interest to us or might be potentially of interest to us. And here's the killer one that, you know, it even stores the data that we don't know what it use it might be. So a data lake has to be scalable and you know kind of a cheap repository because you're just putting everything that you can acquire there and making sure that you know it is accessible to you when you need it. So we see the modernization perspective not because we were at a you know Gartner conference and big data is a big you know buzzword these days and we got to have the big data but modernization because you know the big data technologies are driving certain new capabilities which did not exist earlier that we would be missing out if we did not modernize our databases <clears throat> so these top four that uh, in our experience active archive so this is the biggest one so a data lake driven modernization would allow us to have a very active archive of information which can be accessed on demand uh, for compliance perspectives, uh, for analyst perspectives, for experimentation or exploratory analysis perspective. Um, you know, so that this is the biggest one, you know, capability that, uh, uh, you know, a data lake can bring uh, to the modernized data warehouse. Then also self-service exploratory BI can become possible with a uh, data lake capability. Now, <clears throat> this again is a very important one because now you have the access to the whole source of truth, the, these new forms of data, and you could be moving your existing data as well and mixing this and providing a sandbox, a safe uh, uh, kind of a behind the firewalls uh, exploratory zone for your analytical users to actually 
look at the data and figure out what might be use cases or what might be the areas where you know the enterprise could leverage uh, new models or you know could leverage new insights from the data which is there uh, it does include another capability uh, i've already spoken about it you know advanced analytics at scale meaning that instead of a sample set of data we are working in the full sets of data uh, there is a lower cost of transformation as well you know we have built this on cheap hardware it's based on open source uh, you know sql like paradigms are available so there is a typically lower cost of transformation for the data that we are handling at scale some of the typical benefits that we've seen and this is the uh, biggest modernization benefit the top you know three in our case would be you know kind of allowing the organization to create an adjunct or an augmented um, uh, to your enterprise data warehouse we like to call it you know that instead of a data warehouse dwbi stack that you had now you kind of converting that into a um, you know data warehouse capabilities that you have right and with this augmented capabilities and we saw that the top four capabilities are lower cost of transformation advanced analytics uh, active archive and certain other things there are a variety of use cases that uh, become um, you know uh, applicable uh, you could offload relatively colder data and workloads from your existing data warehouse so that you can free up the capacity contain the cost and then uh you know use the existing data warehouse for doing something more we worked with several customers where we found that 40% of their existing data warehouse capacity is actually dedicated and going to um etl kind of workloads and data warehouses are not meant to be used for in database etls right so it could free up a lot of cost and move that kind of a colder data set and also the workloads on to the data lake in a hadoop uh, modernized uh, augmented big data warehouse obviously you get tremendous support for unstructured data because in the hadoop warehouse you could be just putting in raw data uh, you know it's all schema on uh, read so you don't have to invest in pre processing the data and finding out what the data structure might be you could deal with cleansing the data the data quality later and you can first ingest and land the data um <clears throat> it kind of also creates a new analytical paradigm that we are increasingly seeing that it kind of democratizes the access to data and what i mean when i say democratize it's like everybody kind of gets the equal right or equal access to the data um uh, please raise your hands if you ever had trouble reaching out to a data set that was in some other department or you know was in some data mart that was not controlled by your line of business all right so there you go so that's another capability that uh, you know a data lake uh, kind of a modernized architecture brings to uh, you know the, to the fore so obviously you know this democratized access has certain drawbacks and needs a new form of governance to be put in place and we'll talk about that a little bit later as to a blueprint of how you got to manage that the most important uh, perspective that we've seen with a lot more enhanced or you know kind of evolved modernized database uh, data warehouse is that you have the ability to do a cost performance analysis for the workloads that you want to put on your warehouse now what this means is that let's say that you know there is a x number of data sources and you know a certain dimension and cardinality data set that you have to put and you are moving a uh, certain processing and analytical workloads onto that um, <clears throat> particular use case with the modernized data uh, warehouse with a data lake architecture you now have two very important capabilities and you can figure out on a cost performance basis what is the best place and the right cost performance that you want and you know based on that you can decide i want to run it on the data lake the hadoop driven you know warehouse or do i want to use my existing dwbi infrastructure to run these workloads if you don't modernize your warehouses you're stuck with only having what you have right you don't have that power of the choice so this is the biggest uh, 
uh, data lake architecture benefit that we are seeing that the organizations that we work with gain when they have a modernized uh, warehouse. So let's uh, move forward, uh, kind of midway through, and uh, want to look at and talk a, a little bit about how do you want to, you know, how do we really go about uh, implementing a, a, a modernized data warehouse? And there are many, you know, strategies for that. And by far the biggest one is the, um, uh, I would say I haven't seen any other, but this is the uh, one of the most talked about as well and in our experience the most implemented that we worked with our customers is that you know use the data lake start building capabilities and then start integrating a uh, your it with your uh, existing enterprise data warehouse such that you have the logical data warehouse model in operation right and uh, some of the design principles that we work with uh, necessarily that you know uh, when you start designing and re-architecting uh, the warehouse. So it's not a big bang approach, it's an evolutionary approach for us. I'll present that four stage approaches that uh, we've successfully used. So obviously um, the top five for us is discovery without limitations, low latency at any scale, uh, got to have elasticity in the infrastructure so that you can scale with the demand rapidly if it's gonna take you another six weeks to add new nodes and you know provision for new data. Uh, you're back to the same world, uh, and it has to be affordable, uh, you know, at scale, at almost unlimited scale, uh, and you have to make sure that the architecture is rapidly moving the organization from a reactive uh, paradigm of analytical processing to a predictive paradigm of uh, analytical processing, meaning that you are driving the latency from the time you get the data to the time you can get insight out of the data, closer and closer and closer, such that it could be instantaneous. The moment you acquire the data, you can drive the insight from it. Um, the important couple of uh, challenges, and I would say kind of a checklist that we have from our experiences. Obviously, I did talk about the data lake that um, you know you can store all forms of data, uh, but you cannot store all data, and you cannot ever. Uh, you know, even think about or plan for storing all the data. A good example is social data, right? You acquire social data on your customer, anonymized data sets. Do you store all of the Twitter firehose feed that you get? No, I, I don't think you should plan for storing all such kind of data. Get some cleanse insights uh, or a cleanse data set that you think is important and you only provision and uh, plan to store that level of uh, data in your uh, you know, in the data lake. Uh, the other one is uh, the big one. I'm just looking at some of the things here. Uh, so let me talk about uh, building our data lake. So in our experience, we've seen a staged approach to a data lake or modernizing your data warehouse, the most appropriate way to move forward. So we start from stage one, which is where we try to set the foundation of handling and ingesting data at scale. Stage two is all about building the analytical muscle, you know, having the ability to uh, lay out the pipelines, monitor it, provision it, have the, all the operational aspects of it ironed out that you can handle it in production, and have some POCs and in production as well as certain uh, you know, workloads shifted that are now forming an adjunct to the warehouse. Uh, stage three is when you really start causing the operational impact. A large variety of your operational data stores, your data marts and the workloads have started working in either using the insights being driven from the data lake or are working in unison with the uh, data lake together. And lastly, then you have the enterprise capability where all enterprise data warehouses and marts, including the big data-driven data mart or the warehouse, appears and is available to the full organization as one big giant capability. So let's look at stage one and some of the challenges and uh, you know what uh, what we end up doing there. So the stage one is looks fairly simplistic. You know, if I have to like the picture says, you know, a thousand words here, you're creating a landing and an ingestion zone, basically, right? 
And then you're creating capabilities and ways to handle streaming sources of data, unstructured sources of data, bringing structured sources of data. They could be from third parties or they could be coming from your own enterprise data marts or warehouses. So it might be a feedback kind of a loop control as well. Uh, machine generated data as well as external social sources of data. Now why this is important is because this is what forms and proves for you what are the data sources, what kind of uh, data sets are you going to be handling. Um, we've seen in our experience that if we invest enough time, although it might sound counterintuitive that I'm not using the data right now, so why should I even spend time in, in, in building this capability? Maybe I just move on in parallel with figuring out all the workloads and everything. But we've seen that if we spend, uh, you know, at least the first part of the three months of your journey, I would say to 12 weeks of your journey, proving out and perfecting this foundation, it lays a very good, uh, you know, it gives you the muscle to start experimenting very rapidly and set you up for success. 80% uh, or more of the types of data that you would have to handle and the kind of kinks that are there in data and you know the problems of how am I going to acquire it, all that pipeline would be laid out by this three-month phase. So talk about the uh, stage two. We're building the uh, analytical muscle here. Um, so we're now started leveraging the enterprise data in uh, the data lake that's there on Hadoop. And uh, we are now started experimenting uh, all sorts of uh, analytical workloads, batch, mini batch, real time, interactive, exploratory, all, all types of you know, latency permutation combinations with the uh, consumption driven patterns. So uh, this phase is also very important because we are now laying out the IT operations uh, blueprint for the organization. So the foundation of how you provision, what workflows are there to handle these, uh, how do you deploy in production, how do you deploy your application, your workloads, monitoring and your security policies uh, and principles for data access are also, you know, this would be the next part where we would be doing and laying out the application as well. Uh, that's when we start connecting this also with the kind of proof of value, proof of concept, you know, building the use cases, integrating it with running applications to drive richer insights uh, kind of a phase. Some of the typical challenges that we've seen here is um, people do not look at the real-time nature of data and they look at it fairly late in the game. So it's an after effect, an afterthought. And they say, okay, I'm not real time enough and my business is real, not real time enough. So I'll deal with it when it happens. Trust me, all, all businesses are real time. And uh, you would need it sooner than you can think because a lot of the value of the business um, you know, can be rapidly gained from uh, the real time streaming sources of data. Now, um, with several of our customers we've also worked with and we've shown them how real time doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have the Twitter firehose kind of real time streams of data. But it could also mean that you could connect the data that flows within the enterprise, you know, like in a fast enterprise bus. And that could be a stream that you could visualize. So you could connect and your CRM system could be emitting the things that are happening in, in the uh, you know, operational data store as a stream of events. You could be um, you know, looking at your uh, HR system, you could be looking at your you know, order taking system, and you could create a parallel stream of events that could be uh, applicable and made available. So this foundational muscle is very important to integrate the applications for future. So it doesn't necessarily mean external sources of real-time streaming sources of it, uh, you know, uh, data coming in. It also means that you, know, you are building the muscle to move the enterprise data around fast. So uh, let's move on to the next phase, and that's the stage three. The data lake and the EDW are now working in unison, and we are trying to look at the use cases uh, where uh, both could coexist. And these two are seen as two different sources of data that can be leveraged for each other's strength and uh, other things. 
So typically, it just means that you start laying the pipes and the connections, data pipelines that you know take the data from the data lake into your warehouses and bring it back. You know, those are the kind of uh, points, you know, data points, exchange point pipelines that you would be setting up. And again, like I said, that we are you know uh, coming out with this new uh, thought process using the streaming platform that we built to kind of convert that into a, and leverage that to create a real-time streaming bus to move data fast within the enterprise. So that also could be used to move the data between the lake and the operational data warehouses uh, as it happens. Now, so not, so stage four. So moving from stage three to stage four is when we run into the dilemma, right? That's what we like to call it. Uh, so the dilemma stands for the data and basically the ingestion and storage aspects of uh, governance and security and compliance. So when you start looking at the data lake as your, you know, in unison and this this is one big enterprise capability, there is a higher order of, uh, of uh, I would say, higher order of, uh, order of governance that is needed. There is a higher order of audit and compliance that is needed to, for, for this to operate at the whole enterprise level. Um, then the information lifecycle management. How do you manage the lineage of the data that flows between two distinct capabilities? How do, you know, how do you manage the lineage that, of the data that can coexist or partially can exist in the big data lake uh, and in the data warehouse as well? Uh, the enterprise uh, metadata management. You know, you need to have a metadata layer that can help you discover what data lives where, uh, you know, what is available, uh, you know, how you can reach it, uh, the discovery part, ontology, you know, to describe the data as well, and the access. You need to have one unified way of accessing the data irrespective of where it resides. So if you solve the dilemma, then you move forward and you've got yourself a fully modernized uh, data warehouse, which includes a data lake as an adjunct capability. Uh, now you see that the only difference that you might notice here is another foundational layer of governance, information lifecycle management, etc. But this is a very important set of capabilities built on that. Now we don't have time to, uh, I just had 30 minutes, but there's a lot more I can talk about how we actually went about doing governance, setting up the governance policies, a whole body of experience behind the ISO 27001, you know, kind of experiences, HIPAA compliance, and all of, all of those. There, there are enough number of things I can share with you, but we don't have the time to go into that level of detail today. So moving forward, you know, this, this is what, you know, our blueprint has been, a four-stage journey to reach there. And then the top three tactics that we are seeing how once you have the, uh, you know, the stage journey in motion, how, how people are using, uh, uh, some of our customers are using it, just the capabilities at stage one, once you get the stage one capability, it's not that you don't derive value out of it. At that point in time, you could start deriving value to make it a pre-processing engine, you know. Uh, so you could write map reduce jobs or use the landing zone to create capability to Greek, uh, extract insights which could enrich your data warehouses. Uh, then as you move on into uh, the stage two, you could be using it as an offloading kind of a tactic. You could offload colder workloads, colder sets of data, less risky sets of data onto uh, you know, the, uh, the modernized warehouse. And then in a fully uh, modernized warehouse, obviously the exploration kind of a uh, use case is the biggest one. So once you have that capability, you could discover, explore new uh, high value insights from the data itself. So in summary, uh, I'm not gonna read all of this out, but you know, Hadoop is real, big data is real. They are changing the face of the uh, data warehouses forever. Uh, they're not going to replace uh, the data warehouse uh, architectures. Uh, TWBI technologies that exist are proven, have a place, and uh, you know will continue to have a place. But the big data technologies are accelerating the possibilities for exploring new kind of opportunities that come with newer sorts of data. Um, the modernization will necessarily entail that you re-architect the data warehouse. And this is an evolving journey, a stage journey. We're not uh, suggesting a big bang approach um, to
to uh, to add new capabilities like i said you know uh, one of the things biggest things that uh, we tell our customers in our experience has been modernize the way the data is shuffled around if you do that later than earlier it's going to come and bite you in the back very soon you know uh, and we've had customers that you know we worked with that we are helping them now to modernize the way the data is sh being shuffled around there are models and approaches to handle the dilemma and uh, we have perfected some of those so we'd love to talk to you about that stop by our booth i'll be happy to talk more about that and there are defined best practices and roadmaps for modernizing the enterprise data warehouse i shared a kind of a blueprint but there's a lot more detail and perhaps it uh, you know we keep on doing a series of webinars that we are planning to take one of each one of these uh, elements and examine them in more detail and share our best practices uh, so please sign up uh, we are at impetus.com uh, or write to us at bigdataandimpetus.com and uh, we'll be happy to uh, share more details with you so i see i have a red light blinking and about a minute left but uh, i'll be happy to take more questions or uh, if anybody has anything to share yes That's a yeah. So that's a great question, and uh, you know that's one of the biggest challenges that people have is like you know you have two sources of data. How do I mix them? How do I understand what is there? And that's where you know one of the things I talked about was the discovery, the metadata layer, and having that ability to uh, discover the data and then figure out that you know for average business users, how can they reach? that data and you know having the capabilities and the tools to extract and you know work with that data so there are many federation kind of uh, you know tools which are there which federate data there are data virtualization tools that allow that to happen this new category of tools which are coming up with manage uh, metadata in a more logical data warehouse fashion as well so that's uh, the you know the the biggest strategy what we've seen is that you know people will have to you know start adopting this tool and this kind of capability will have to be built in if you want to fully you know go the go, go to the stage four right any other questions i'm out of time if you have to so please uh, do stop by our booth and we'll be happy to talk to you thank you for your time today